Hi, thanks for joining me for this video. Today we're going to do a short Qigong sequence for better sleep. What I'd like to do is just go directly and do the sequence. And after we finish the sequence, then I'll go through some of the theory and ideas and explanation of the postures. But let's begin with just the routine itself. So we're standing feet side by side, weight over our heels, lengthening the spine up and setting the shoulders down. The left foot just steps out so the feet are shoulder width apart. The first posture, natural respiration. Roll the hands out, bring the arms up, one. And then palms facing down, the hands come down in front of the body until the hands and arms return to our sides. Now two. Roll the palms out, lift the arms up, three. Relax the shoulders and lower the elbows. Allow the hands to follow through. Two more times. Open across the chest. Lengthen the body up. Three. Gather in. Settling down. Six. One more time. Breathing in. Lowering the hands and breathing out. The second posture is an eye massage. For this, we bring our hands up to the sides of the head, fingertips, the outside corner of the eyes. What's important is to actually feel just on the outside ridge of the skull. There's a little dip just on the outside ridge, maybe a little bit below. And we just want to apply some light pressure holding that point. And we breathe in. And out. From here, we're going to find a point by the inside corner of the eye and hold that. But to get there, we bring our hands and lightly draw them along the bottom of the ridge, the eye socket, and then again, using our sense of touch with the index fingers, we feel for a little dip it's on the inside corner of the eye and up a little bit, just from there. There's a little area there with a dip that's tender, holding that area, breathing in. And out. We'll come back to the first point and similar, we just draw our hands, we can switch to our thumbs, traveling along the upper ridge of the eye socket, we come around, so that's just with light pressure. We find that first point again on the outside corners of the eyes, holding that. and then sliding along the bottom of the eye, coming to the inside corner, holding that point. The second half of this eye massage, so we rub our hands together until there's a little bit of warmth. We place our palms over our eyes. Relax the eyes. Relax all the muscles around the eyes and at the temple. Relax the jaw. Same thing again. Palms over the eyes. We do the same thing, but this time the back of the base of the skull, behind the ears. Placing our hands there. Relax the neck. Relax the shoulders. Palms. 
palms again, warming those points. The next posture is body tapping. So we're tapping from the arms and through the body. When we're tapping, we want to have the, using a, the hand as a loose fist, wrist is relaxed. Not with strike, unlike striking. Striking, we're using the pointy hard parts to strike. When we're tapping, we're using the flat and soft parts of the arm and hand to do the tapping. So flat of the fist, outside of the fist, base of the fist, meaning this area between the thumb and index finger. So these are the areas from the front of the shoulder down the inside of the arm to the palm. Turn the hand over back of the hand, outside of the arm, up to the shoulder, top of the shoulder. Same thing on the other side, from the front of the shoulder, tapping along the inside of the arm to the hand. Turn the hand over, back of the hand, outside of the arm, top of the shoulder. And then from there, across the chest, to the rib cage on the sides. And then at the small of the back, coming to the mid back as much as we can reach. Coming to the hips. And then the outside of the legs with the flat of the hands to the outside ankles and then the inside ankles to the knees and then to the abdomen. Same thing again, down the inside of the first arm, back of the hand and outside of the arm to the top of the shoulder. Other side, down the arm to the palm, turn the hand over, along the outside of the arm to the top of the shoulder, front of the chest, Coming to the sides, rib cage, and then waist to the back and hips. Outside of the legs, to the ankles, inside ankles, back to the abdomen. All that tapping, we need something to settle the channels down. So palms pointing up, bring the hands up. Turn the palms to face down, bring the hands level with the lower abdomen. Palms facing up, keep the shoulders relaxed. So bring the elbows out to the sides. Palms facing down, relax and lower the hands. Two more times, breathe in and out. One more time, nice full breath, breathing in and a nice full breath, breathing out. Extending the palm, supporting the knee. We step out so our feet are just a little wider than our shoulders. Weight is equal on both legs. We bring our hands up, palms facing each other. From here, shift our weight to one side. Try and keep the hips level and the body upright. So instead of having the body lean or the hips come, come uneven, keep the hips level with each other, body upright. If we go to one side, the hand on that side comes forward at shoulder height. The other hand, we place palm face down just in front of the body, level with the lower abdomen. The amount of the weight shift doesn't have to be too much, just a little bit more to one side. We don't want to strain the knee. From here, bring the lower hand up towards the other palm, bring both hands up and weight on both legs too. Shift the weight to the other side. Hand on that side goes forward at shoulder height. Other palm facing down. Bring the hand up, both hands overhead, 
four. Weight going to the first side. Hand on that side forward at shoulder height, palm facing out, other palm facing down. Bring the arms up, weight on both legs, six. Shift the weight to the other side, seven. Hands coming up, and eight. Lower the arms. Looking over the shoulders. Loose fists at our sides. Opening one hand so the palm faces front. Other hand, bring the back of the hand across or against the ribs and then point that palm behind us. One hand goes forward as the other hand goes back. Turn to look over the shoulder. Close the hands into loose fists. Bring them back to our sides and face front. Two. Switching sides. Look over the other shoulder. Three. Close the hands into loose fists, hands coming back, and four. Keep the body upright, turning smoothly through the spine. Look over the first shoulder again. Straighten the wrists, curl the hands or the fingers in. Turn to face front, coming back to alignment, six. Open the hands, turn the other way. Seven. Close the fingers, loose fists coming back to our sides. Good. And eight. Clearing heart fire. We step out, feet a little wider than our shoulders. Hands on our thighs. Thumbs pointing back, fingertips in front. Weight over the heels. We're mainly doing a lean to the side, stretching out the sides of the body. The hands don't have to stay fixed, they can move. So we lean to the first side. One. Straightening back up and two. Leaning to the other side. Three. Coming back into alignment and four. As we lean to the first side, the arm on the other side, straighten the elbow so the wrist bends. Five. Coming back upright, six. Leaning the other way, other elbow straightens out. Seven. Coming back up. Good. And eight. Centering the heart. We bring one hand, palm open, in front of the chest. Other hand, at the same time, bring the fingertips together. Place it at the small of the back. So it's at the low back. You can rest the hand on the low back, or you can hold it a little bit away from the low back. So one hand in front, one hand behind. Weight over the heels, open across the chest. One. Then gradually relax and lower the arms, coming to our sides and two. So switching hands, one palm in front, the other with the fingers together behind. Three. Relax the shoulders, lower the arms, and four. First hand in front again. Open across the shoulders. Set the shoulders down, lift the sternum, five, relax, lower the arms, six, changing hands, seven, arms coming back to our sides, and eight. Just two more moves, integrating the chi. The hands come to the small of the back, one hand over the other with the palms facing up. We bring these hands around the waist, up in front of the shoulders, palms facing front, fingertips pointing up. The hands go out. One. Lower the hands, relax the arms, 
hands at our sides and two. The same thing from the small of the back, bring the hands around the waist, roll the shoulders back and down to bring the hands in front of the shoulders. Three, extend out, keep the weight on the heels, relax and lower the hands and four. Two more times. As the hands come around the waist, relax the low back, put the weight to the heels. Then open across the chest, drop the elbows. Pressing out. Six, lowering the hands. One more time. As the hands come in front of the shoulders, breathing in. Pressing the hands forward, breathing out, lowering our hands to our sides. And the last move, opening and closing the middle Dantian, we bring our hands up in front of the solar plexus. So right where the ribs meet, so a little bit below the chest, a little bit above the lower abdomen, just in this area here. Keep the elbows set down and relaxed, palms facing each other. And then just breathing at your own pace as you breathe in, allow the hands to move apart a little bit. And as we breathe out, allow the hands to come back towards each other. Just breathing at your own pace. Allowing the hands to open and close. Breathing in. And breathing out. And close. Very good. Let's look at uh, the idea of Qigong for better sleep and then some of the ideas from Chinese medicine around how sleep happens or doesn't happen and then uh, these moves and how they relate to encouraging better sleep. First and most important is this question of what is the intention that we set when we do our Qigong. Um, the intention is a very important thing, and this is Qigong not to cure insomnia, this is Qigong for better sleep. Um, because my feeling is that the more we try and apply Qigong to uh, fixed goals, the less likely it will succeed. Uh, Qigong is built on a process and encouraging the process of the body being able to regulate the channels is what gives it its beneficial effects. The more we take the attention away from that broad general idea, the less effective it will be able to achieve its goals. The broadest way of doing it, and this is similar to the descriptions I've had, I've heard or read of, me of meditation, which is, there is no point to doing Qigong. You just do Qigong. The end result may be that you are calmer, that you sleep better, that you handle stress better, that your emotions are more regulated, that your body is more vibrant and alert. But those are not the reason you do Qigong. You simply do Qigong as a practice of doing Qigong. Those are the side benefits that happen. So setting intention is very important setting intention is around the ability for your body to move from wakefulness during the day to asleep at night. In Chinese medicine, 
uh, the ideas is that the chi in the blood and therefore our consciousness, our spirit, uh, travels through the channels, comes out uh, from its resting and activates all the channels and organs, tissues, etc. This is what gives us our daytime activities, our thoughts and our experiences. At night, we want the channels to be open so that there's this process of the chi in the blood moving down through the uh, through the channels to the deeper channels to come to rest in the core of the body. The deepest of the channels is connected to the liver and the pericardium. Uh, the main idea though is that in these deeper channels and because of its connection to the liver, the blood gets revitalized and cleansed over the nighttime process and the chi is, is able to rest. Uh, for that to happen, the channels need to be open and the consciousness needs to be able to settle. Right. And then when we wake up, uh, the rising of the, uh, the dawn of the day allows the body, stirs the body and the chi and the blood begin to expand out and then we're awake, moving the chi up to the eyes, they say. So what are the conditions that we need for this process to happen? We need our body to be able to move in relation to the day and night cycle in the place that we're in. So we need this connection to that uh, day and night cycle. We also need the channels to be open and responsive. If there's a blockage in the channel, if there's tension in the tissues, in the muscles, the chi in the blood, the consciousness that's uh, at the surface will start to move in and then stop. It won't be able to move any further because the channel is blocked, the way is blocked. And then it's only with the channels open that the chi in the blood can continue its uh, return to the core. So the channels need to be open. Uh, the mind needs to be able to let go. It needs to be able to come to a rest. And then once that happens, that's when we fall asleep. To stay asleep, we need everything to be able to stay calm and settled. So those are the four requirements. Uh, and uh, these explain sometimes why we're not able to fall asleep. If we have too much exposure to, uh, say, screens, that scrambles our day, uh, wake sleep cycle, our day and night cycle, our connection to the outside, um, if we're not outside enough, to get the cues of uh, the, where, the, where the sun is in the sky, when it starts to become uh, twilight, then our body isn't able to find that rhythm itself. So uh, we need to have those lifestyle things in place to help us with our better sleep. Then we need the channels to be open if the channels, as I was mentioning, are blocked. Uh, if there's too much tension in the body, if there's uh, too much uh, emotional tension even in the body, this will prevent the channels from being open and allowing the passage of the chi and blood to become settled at the core of the body. The mind needs to be able to let go. Uh, I'm sure everyone at some point has had this experience uh, uh, where the mind is uh, unable to let go of some thought and then that is what prevents us from falling asleep or falling back asleep once we've woken up. And then of course the last part is that both the mind and the chi and the blood needs to stay settled in the core of the body so that we can have an uninterrupted uh, night's sleep. Let's look at some of the, let's look at the postures that we've gone through with this sequence and see how they relate to those requirements. The first posture, natural respiration, here. This one opens the channels. It's also related uh, to the lungs because of this large motion opening across the chest and then relaxing, settling the rib cage. Um, this is relevant in that in Chinese medicine, there's the idea that the lungs with the breath set the rhythms of the body. And so to find the rhythms of the body, um, we need to uh, encourage uh, and uh, activate the lung and the lung channel. So natural respiration. Relax, lower the hands. 
arms returning to our sides. Doing that same motion again, opening out, lifting up. Then relax the shoulders, lower the elbows, allow the body to set back down. This has this opening feeling and this closing feeling or settling feeling. This is part of finding that rhythm in the body. From there, we did the eye massage, massaging uh, from the outside, point holding here. This point actually is a point, uh, they say the yang comes up and invigorates and opens the eyes, comes to the outside, uh, outside channels. The yin, which allows the, the mind to relax and the eyes to close, comes up through the channels to the inside corner of the eye. So we're massaging, starting from the outside, to draw any excess away from the channel. And then we come to the inside points uh, to draw the yin up and allow that to close the eyes and settle the mind. So from the outside points, coming to inside points. Then we warm our hands and we place our hands over the eyes, relaxing the eyes. And we do the same thing, but at the back base of the skull. There's important acupuncture points, acupoints, an yen, which are just at the base of the skull through here. These points, an yen means restful sleep or peaceful sleep. And so bringing our hands here, activate the channels here to allow the brain to settle. From Relaxing the eyes, relaxing the brain, we then want to have the channels become open and responsive. So we use the tapping method. Tapping along all of the channels, first on the arms, first on one side, and then of course on the other side. We do both at the same time, but we don't have that many, we'd need an extra set of arms to do that. And then from the chest along the sides of the body, this area is important as we'll see in a moment, coming to the back. Then the outside of the legs. And then from the inside of the ankles up. This method of tapping activates the channels, brings more activity to the channels. Um, and uh, opens the channels. We want this opening of the channels, but we need the channels to then settle. If we just do the tapping by itself, we might end up more alert, more awake. So we follow that with the smoothing out of the channels, the nice simple move that just raises and lowers the hands, lifting up and settling back down. So technically there are two different moves, the body tapping and the raising and lowering of the hands. But from this perspective, we can sort of see that they are really just two parts to one sequence. Activate, open the channels, and then smooth the channels and get everything to settle downwards. Right. From there, the next move is to help the mind uh, stop and let go, stop the thinking. So here, weight uh, equal on both legs. We bring the hands up. Set the weight to one side. Keep the body upright. Extend the palm on that side as the other hand palm face down. With this posture, we want the body, shoulders and hips fairly lined up just with the weight off to one side. So it's this kind of posture with one palm placed forward, other hand placed down. Instead of something that twists or leans the body, want everything just nice and lined up. The weight's just a little bit to one side, and then we come up, set to the other side. Again, nice and lined up, extend to the palm, one in front, one set down. This motion here has two aspects that I wanted to highlight. One is simply just this rocking back and forth coming up, over to the other side, set down, 
up, come to the other side, sit down. And this rocking motion helps to settle the mind. Um, and then we want the mind to stop thinking. So there's this tricky thing where if we just let go of our intent, instead of letting go of the thinking, uh, then it's going to not work. We're going to let go of any intention and then the thinking is going to kick in and continue. So we actually need to be quite um, careful about this uh, process of getting the mind to stop. So it needs a certain structure to it, a certain intent to it that says, stop. Right? Coming up. All those thoughts, all the thinking of, and then this is going to happen, and that's going to happen, and oh, just stop. Stop the thinking, but keep the intent. So there's the supporting the knee and extending the palm. Good. Looking over the shoulders, there's an interesting dynamic that happens uh, when we pick up stress through the, in the body. Uh, often uh, it's described as a tension that's held either in the tissues, in the muscles as a tightness, or it's just held in the channels, so it's in the fascia, that it constricts across the sides of the body. This constriction here comes through and then constrains into the chest. And so uh, to allow the chest, uh, the heart, and the spirit to become relaxed and settled, often what needs to happen is for these areas on the sides of the body to move and open. So the next two moves, looking over the shoulder, comes through with intention placed to this rotation and movement across the sides of the body. Open the hands. There's the focus of looking at the back hand, but it's also this having the hands travel alongside the ribs, the back of the hand coming across the ribs here, and then extending through. This movement, looking over the shoulder, followed by clearing heart fire. This description of clearing the heart fire is exactly that process of the constraint happening here, hemming in the chest, the emotions of the chest creating heat that has nowhere to go. And that's the heart fire that keeps everything um, too active. So we can maybe we can fall asleep, but the constraint is going to cause that heat to build up and then suddenly we're awake. Especially between the hours of 1 and 3 in the morning. So from here, to release that constraint, to prevent that heat from building up, so you stay asleep between 1 and 3 in the morning, what we want to do is we want to open these areas. So we lean to the side. Same thing on the other side. There is also the channels along the inside of the arm. I mentioned at the beginning that the channels that connect to the pericardium and to the liver that are the ones that are the deepest channels. This is where we want the chi and the blood to rest. So when we have this arm extend, then we're lengthening and opening the channel for the pericardium on one side and the pericardium on the other. last two moves, uh, next two moves, centering the heart, again having this area become calm and still, it is balanced, the heart and the chest is related to fire in Chinese theory, while the kidneys are related to water. They say the water the heat from the warmth of the heart comes down to activate the kidneys, warm the kidneys, while the water of the kidneys moves up to the heart to again prevent the heat from becoming too much. And so this posture with one hand in the chest, one hand at the small of the back, 
is to draw our attention to this dynamic and to help connect these two areas, bringing them into connection, into balance with each other. When we have the posture, one side or the other, we want to have our weight over our heels, relax the low back, lift the sternum, the breastbone, lift the bone up, lift, lift the chest up, and open across the shoulders, setting the shoulders down. So instead of something which is collapsed here, we want to all have an open chest uh, and nice solid structure. And then from there, gradually relax and take the tension out of the arm so that the hands end up with the fingertips pointing down to the ground. Same thing on the other side, finding that open, solid, expanded structure of the body. Maintaining that structure, take the tension out and allow the hands to settle down. Now the last two moves, integrating the chi again from the low back, this area of the kidneys, up through, connecting to where? The heart. And then again, extending through to the palms. This is the pericardium and heart channels. Also the lung channels. And then allowing those arms to come back to rest. One more time, gathering up. Coming through, open. Extend through the arms to the palms, then out to the fingertips. Stay focused on the fingertips as the arms gradually return to our sides. And then the last move, open and close. We bring our hands up. This is again thinking about this area through the uh, diaphragm and the liver where the uh, blood and chi is stored at night and allowing it to have this relaxed um, opening and closing. The key with this move is that we want to coordinate the hands with our breath, uh, but it needs to happen in a automatic fashion. So if we're consciously directing our hands and saying, oh, I breathe in, I better move my hands, then the hands have a different quality of the movement. If it's being directed by our thoughts, then uh, it will have a quality that's stiff. Instead, what we want to have is we want to focus our intent on an opening and a closing, an expanding and a settling back in. And then we want the body to respond to that intention. So from here, it's merely no thought put towards the hands at all, but merely thinking of expansion and in doing that, the arms and the palms respond. And then we think of settling back. And this is what provides the open and close. This kind of automatic connection between the mind and the body is also part of that process that allows us to move from that state of being awake and conscious to falling asleep, letting the consciousness settle and become relaxed. So there's an overview of some of the theory, an explanation of some of the um, movements. I would recommend, uh, it's not a very long routine, familiarize yourself with uh, the moves and the sequence so that you don't have to watch a screen at the end of the day when you want to be doing this routine. And now you can go back to the beginning of the video, watch that first sequence and uh, get familiar with the moves so that uh, you can practice them without the screen on your own. I hope this information is helpful for you. Keep training, keep practicing and take care.